Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So um, this is uh, Meatloaf 40. Um, so we're rapidly approaching uh, a year's worth of meatloafs, if you can believe it. Um, so in this one, uh, we got uh, some viewer appreciation mail that showed up. And I have to tell you, uh, it just blows me away the generosity of some of you guys out there. And I really appreciate it. And it's like magic, okay? Um, for example, uh, I showed an insert holder that I didn't have any inserts for, so some poof and uh, magically appeared uh, 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 in the mailbox. So uh, um, anyway, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled by this uh, that you're that you appreciate what I'm doing, and uh, I just want to acknowledge that. And uh, so thank everybody, thank you everybody out there. Um, so anyway, we got some <laughs> some viewer appreciation mail. Um, so. Last week's mystery tool apparently wasn't that much of a mystery. Uh, uh, a whole bunch of people guessed uh, it rapid fire right out, of the, right out of the gate. They knew exactly what it was. So I got one that's, I think, a little tougher this time. Uh, we'll try that. And um, I, uh, I got a new tool catalog that I want to show you guys because it's got some stuff in it that kind of surprised me. Um, and let's see, what else? Um, I don't know. We'll figure out something else to throw in there, too. So... Uh, um, anyway, let's get an apron on. Let's go. Uh, oh, flea market. That's what it was. So I got some flea market stuff we're going to look at. So um, um, went to the flea market and uh, got a couple of neat things, and uh, we'll show those on camera too. So let's get an apron on. Let's go over to the other table and uh, we'll pull some of this set, <laughs> pull some of this stuff out, and, uh, and have a look at it. Okay. So uh, this next one here comes to us from uh, Bill uh, De La Vega. And uh, he's in Southern California, and uh, what he did was uh, he's got a photo enlarger, and he printed me some uh, some step tablets here, step charts, uh, and these are grayscale uh, step charts. Anyway, uh, these are printed on photo paper here, so he did these for me. And actually, let's look in the camera and see if I can see all those. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. That one looks. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to play around with them a little bit. Um, anyway, he printed those for me and uh, and mailed them up. And so we'll uh, we'll try playing around with those a little, Bill. Thank you very much. And uh, and uh, he said uh, he had fun playing with his uh, his enlarger. He hasn't played around with it in a while, so uh, he kind of had fun uh, doing that. So Bill, glad you had some fun, and uh, thank you very much for that. And uh, so Bill, he writes on these. Uh, Jorgensen uh, pads here, Earl Jorgensen, that's a steel supplier, a big steel supplier, and uh, so uh, apparently he's got a, a handful of those pads that he uses. So anyway, thanks a lot, Bill, appreciate that. Okay, so this next one, uh, this next one comes to us all the way from, uh, from Switzerland. So I got a box from Switzerland, and uh, anyway, this is from uh, Tom uh, Hausemann, and, and he has a, uh, him and his Two brothers, so it's three brothers, and they have a shop in Switzerland. Uh, you know what? And I can't remember what city it is. Um, uh, Reed in uh, Reed, Switzerland. Um, and there's a, uh, a nice heavy-duty Swiss box that it came in. Uh, anyway, he sent me a little uh, a little gift here, and uh, you know these are bottle openers, and they've got their uh, their company name, uh, Hamex. Um, so it's, it's their name and uh, they do mechanical engineering and it's a CNC shop uh, where they do some work. They have a, a Akuma mill, or excuse me, an Akuma lay that is uh, similar to one I used to run. So uh, he and I talk back and forth a little bit on email. Anyway, it's uh, three brothers, uh, Tom, David, and Ben, and um, they do fine Swiss engineering. So they uh, uh, do some race car stuff and um, and mechanical design and some other things. And uh, anyway, check out their little website. Uh, they got a little website, so it's www.hamex.ch, uh, uh, and that'll get, that'll get you there. Anyway, they sent me these little bottle openers and uh, uh, that are pretty spiffy looking here, aluminum, black anodized, and um, um, nice details. So. Looks like the, this is a little tricky area right here to deburr on the machine here because it changes heights. Um, but yeah, nicely done. So anyway, uh, Tom, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Nice little gift from uh, 
from uh, the other side of the world. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this next one comes to us um, from uh, New Jersey, and uh, this is a uh, he. Uh, this is from Dennis Skurb, and uh, he's a longtime viewer and uh, and a prodigious uh, commenter on the channel. Um, so Dennis and I, we uh, we throw barbs back and forth once in a while. It's kind of fun. Um, anyway, he uh, he sent me a nice little note here, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but uh, um, he sent me a couple little things here, and uh, one of which is uh, he sent me a copy of my own book. Um, anyway, Dennis, thank you very much. Appreciate that. No, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, Dennis wanted a uh, he wanted a uh, uh, an inscription in here, and uh, anyway, it's funny. He writes in here. He goes, uh, um, "Oh, I thought maybe you would autograph it for me. Uh, keep in mind my my grandchildren might. Uh, I mean, he's got cuss words here. My freaking my freaking grandchildren might read this. So." Uh, Anyway, I have to put some, uh, I'll inscribe this for you and, uh, and try to keep the language uh, uh, clean for you there, Dennis. Anyway, we'll get that signed. And uh, he also sent me a, uh, he sent me a case of, uh, uh, of this uh, High Buck uh, Toolmakers Air. And you guys know that I use this uh, a little bit on the, uh, on the lathe and mill uh, because I have a, an, uh, an obnoxious compressor. So uh, anyway, uh, thank you very much, Dennis. Appreciate that. All right, so this next one here uh, comes to us from uh, uh, Tom Bellis, and uh, he's in Arizona, and he sent me a little uh, little package here. And uh, interestingly enough, um, I showed, uh, let's see, well, let's just pull it out here. I showed this on camera, I don't know, a week ago, and um, so magically, um, some... Uh, Let's open that up. I haven't looked at that yet. A little note in here. Yeah, okay. Um, TNMA, yeah, okay. So uh, Tom sent me some, uh, he sent me some inserts that happen to fit this here. So let's open that up. So there they are. That's the, the guys that go in there. And, um, now, I'm going to guess that uh, that Mr. Uh, Tom Bellis is a is a smoker because uh, uh, I can smell it on the uh, on the paper and the, this. So, uh, Tom, you should quit smoking. But thanks for the gift anyway. So, <laughs> um, I didn't bring some Allen wrenches over, but you guys will get the idea here. Um, all right. So. Bink. That's how that goes. All right, and then, well, I don't have a, I don't have an Allen wrench for that, but uh, um, this is a clamper here. Put that down, just briefly. Okay, so you kind of get the idea there, and that's how that sits in there, and then that locks it down even harder into the pocket there. So now, each one of these has three edges on it. Bink, bink, bink. And uh, they're just very nice. Oops, they're, man, that one that survived. Um, they're very nicely ground, and uh, these are great for really big threads. And uh, actually, and you can cut small threads with them too. It's just a nice insert. So it's a nice beefy insert that uh, uh, that's very strong um, and uh, and durable. Anyway, this is a this will last me a long time here. Actually, uh, uh, even with this tool and. Uh, uh, anyway, Tom, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Let's. Uh, there's something else here too. So let's take a look at this and see what uh, what's going on here. Gonna be careful here. I don't want to break anything. Oh, okay. So uh, what is it? Oh, okay. So uh, this is a little aircraft drill. So it's got the little quarter twenty eight. Uh, um, Shank, uh, screw in shank on it with a square and uh, so that's uh, what size is that number number 40 and uh, so it's a little aircraft drill so hey, look at this you put it in a little uh, you put it in a little tube and everything that's great so that it wouldn't get messed up so anyway Tom thank you very much Appreci yeah. appreciate that that's uh, 
That's a few years worth of inserts there. I appreciate it, my friend. And uh, those are uh, TNMA43NV uh, inserts. So uh, anyway, in case you're curious. Thank you. Okay, so um, this was uh, last week's uh, mystery tool here. And uh, about a million people uh, guessed correctly what this was. Um, and it's a, uh, in the industry, it's called a, uh, they call them Clecos. And uh, it's probably a, a manufacturer's name uh, at some point. But this is a, uh, a, a Clico that doesn't need a tool. Um, so now here's a, what we, a, a more traditional Clico here. And then uh, here's a, uh, another type that doesn't use a tool. And then here's a, a third type that's uh, for clamping on edges. So um, anyway, these are temporary sheet metal fasteners used in rivet-sized holes. Uh, you see them a lot in the uh, aerospace uh, uh, industry. Um, and they use a pair of pliers like this um, to depress them, okay? So you need the pliers and you need that. This one doesn't need any tool. They're kind of neat. Uh, you don't see them very much anymore. There's a lot of parts, so they're were probably expensive compared to, compared to these here. So let's, uh, let's just quickly show how those work. I got a couple little pieces of sheet metal here, and we'll uh, we'll just pop a couple of pop a couple of little holes through there, kind of random. All right. So the idea is that you have two pieces in close contact like that, right? And you know this might be out in the middle of a sheet here, right? And you want to kind of hold that together. So the idea is that you put this through, and then. You click that, and now those are those are sandwiched together very nicely there. So you might have hundreds of rivet holes. Well, if you don't put something in the rivet hole, then uh, it's very easy to sh to get a little bit of shift between the um, uh, between the hole centers and not have them line up. Okay, so that's that's that type there. And then let's stick this one in just so you guys can see how that one works. So that one goes through. Oops. Oops, the uh, hole might be a little too small for, for this flavor here. Now, they, typically these are, oh, I thought I tried it. Mm -hmm. That one jacked up, I don't know. What's going on there? I don't like the look of that one. Let me grab a different one here. <laughs> so normally you have like, <laughs> you have millions of these things, literally, and uh, if you're doing a lot of this kind of work, Let's do that. All right. Anyway, that's how that works. So, all right. So that's that one. And then the th third one. Let's see, throw that out of the way. Is this uh, kind of hand threaded one, which actually has a lot of travel. I think is one of its. Uh, and they, I guess they call them blind fasteners too. Uh, you only need to get it one side. You don't have to get it the other side. So that one just kind of screws down and it's got a pad there too um, to kind of hold it all together. Okay, and then the last one is the edge clamp here, like so. And then the idea is here, this one comes in from the side and you can clamp and so you can put you can put a million of those on and uh, you take them off and you throw them in a bucket and uh, uh, they're lightweight, they're not, you don't have to screw them down, you know, you can put them on quickly and they grab real well. Anyway, so that was, uh, that was the mystery tool. Uh, like I said, a bunch of people correctly guessed right away, so apparently it wasn't hard enough, so we gotta find something a little harder for this next one, which I think I got, so uh, we're gonna show that in just a minute. Okay, so then we got this thing here. So, you know, I was all uh, I was all excited when I found this. I thought it was some kind of trick, you know, inductive heater or something or whatever. Um, and it is a heater, um, but it's not inductive. Uh, it's ceramic line. What it's for, as it turns out, um, and you guys can look this up on the web. Uh, it says golden hot. Okay, and what it's for is it's. Uh, it's for heating uh, curling irons for hair. So you stick your curling iron in there and it gets hot and you can 
you can crimp hair or straighten hair, or do weird stuff to hair. So it's it's a it's a beauty salon uh, tool, and uh, so it's got this kind of goofy, mundane use. And I was I was lulled into uh, thinking I knew what it was. Uh, and, I, and now it even says uh, it says Tressa or something on the end. So it, it started to make a little more sense. I did plug it in, and it does work. It does get hot. Um, so it might be good for heating up uh, small articles uh, uh, for press fitting or. Uh, I don't know what yet, so uh, we'll see if we can make use of that. Five bucks, I'm not too worried about it. No. But uh, anyway, that's the uh, the golden hot uh, hair curler. So <laughs> anyway, kind of got uh, psyched on that one. So Okay, so this week's uh, mystery tool is this little guy right here. And um, I'm going to roll it around so you guys can kind of see it. And there's no real, there's no real marks on it. Oh, we'll show how it works in a sec there. All right, it's got a threaded knob here. Okay, it's got a uh, it says patent applied for. Got a little emblem on the bottom there or something. I don't know what. So basically, what it does is let's see if we can get the second one to come up there. There it goes. So these basically come up. If if you have, let's see, I don't have anything to stick this in really. So as you screw this in, these come up evenly. Okay. So uh, it's kind of a two-sided clamp. Okay. All right. Let's see if I hold on to that one. Pull this other one. I'm not doing a very good job of demonstrating how this works, but. Uh, There we go. And there's a the second one there. So let's see. So it's some it's some kind of clamping mechanism, and it equalizes the pressure between these two areas here. All right. So either I push that one down, that one comes up. All right. So these it's kind of a self equalizing clamp. All right. Like I said, I'm not doing a very good job. I should have had something that uh, that had a little gap in it that we could. Uh, we could put that in and, uh, and crank it open. But uh, anyway, that's this week's uh, mystery tool. If you guys, uh, and it looks like it's got some holes uh, that you could put a, you know, you could put a tool in there and kind of get a gronk on it there. All right. Um, anyway, if you got a, you think you know what that is, uh, then uh, throw it up in the comments there. And uh, then we will, uh, we will reveal uh, its uh, sinister purpose uh, next week. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at some flea market stuff here, and uh, let's start out. Let's start out with that. I think that was the first thing I got. Um, that was two bucks. Yeah, it was two bucks. It's a little six-inch, um, 150 millimeter rule uh, Fowler. Um, it's, you know, it looks like it's got somebody's initials on it there. Oh, that's pretty funny. It says Tom on it. Somebody engraved Tom on it. That's pretty good. <laughs> Didn't notice that. Maybe it was uh, Tom Wilson or something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, you know, six inch ruler, uh, you know, can't go wrong with that for a couple of bucks. Okay, so that was the first one. And then um, the next one here is kind of weird. So we've been talking about tapers and stuff and uh, I saw this and I'm like, oh, I wonder what that is, right? And this this looks Morse or Jacobs type taper here, and then it's got a straight shank with a uh, with a you know like a we call this a Weldon notch, a W E L D O N Weldon notch, um, you know, so the set screw has a place to clamp, and then you know it can booger up that surface, and you can still get it in and out. So I'm I don't quite know what this is. Uh, but it might make a good centering tool for centering uh, holes or if it happens to be, it looks ground. It feels hard and it looks ground. So this might be a nice accurate taper. We'll have to check it and, uh, and see what that is. Anyway, for a dollar, I said, hey, you know, I'll get that, okay. And uh, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but uh, it might be handy for something. So that was that. Okay, and then, um, so next one here. 
Um, this is a brand new Desmond uh, wheel dresser here, uh, size zero. It does look like it's been used a little bit, not much. Um, not enough for anybody to wear the wheels down and, and gouge up the, uh, the face of this. Most people run these down too low or, you know, they, they wear these out and then they start grinding the face of that, you know, before replacing these. So these are like, these are like a dollar for a set of those, okay? So don't be shy about buying those if you're, if you have a dresser like this. Um, anyway, that was three bucks. So I said, okay, well, I already have one, but, uh, heck, you know, I can probably pass this on to somebody else or, uh, have it as a spare or I don't know what. So, um, anyway, three bucks for that. That was pretty good. So let me, uh, uh, I'm going to take a break and put some of this stuff away and then we'll look at the rest. Okay, so the next one here are these guys here. And these are uh, uh, some annular cutters here. Let's pull them, back, pull them out there. And these are made by uh, Alfra, uh, Rota Best. This, uh, these are made in Germany, I think. out there all right so now um, we've shown these in uh, uh, in previous videos here uh, they're they're very special hole saw so they they cut out a little annular ring here so they're very efficient for making large holes they're also pretty expensive <laughs> so uh, uh, this one here is a uh, it's 1 in 15 sixteenths um, which is uh, you know, it's like 50 millimeters, okay, almost two inches. And um, um, these are over $200 to buy new. And uh, now this one's one inch, about 25 millimeters, and it's just brand new. Um, and uh, now what's interesting about these is these are two inch depth of cut. You know, some of the other ones I have are only one inch depth of cut, so these can cut through two inches of steel uh, before you bottom out in the end there, which is 50 millimeters, okay, for your, our metric viewers. Um, anyway, this one's about $80, and this one's over $200 new. Uh, I got them for $20 a piece. So uh, uh, he had some more, but I, uh, I didn't want to spend all my money uh, uh, in one spot. And, um, you know, this was, <laughs> this was the biggest one he had there. And he says, oh, hey, I have more at home. I go, okay, great, bring them next week. And, uh, um, and I go, I want the big ones. And he goes, oh, okay, okay, yeah. So anyway, he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna bring some more, I think. So, uh, uh, and I didn't ask where they came from. Don't ask, don't tell, right? So uh, um, anyway, so that was pretty good. Uh, I was pretty stoked about that. So we'll put that one to good use for sure. Okay, so next one is this little guy here. Um, and I think the, I don't know, the, uh, this one's okay. The, uh, this is a, uh, a rule clamp here that fits on a combination square blade. And um, so it allows you to, uh, let me grab a, a combination square. Okay, so it goes on like so. It goes on like that. Now, I had one of these, and but I lost track of it. I loaned it to somebody, or uh, I don't know what I, what I did, but for the life of me, I can't find it. And I was looking for it the other day. Uh, anyway, so what it allows you to do is clamp a, a ruler at 90 degrees. So maybe you have to span a, a large opening or something like that, and you want, to, uh, you want to probe the depth of it, like so. You can do that. Uh, there's a little attachment that goes in here that makes this into kind of a height gauge too. So, uh, and you know, you can read direct right off of it. So you can read in a couple directions and it's, it's nicely perpendicular. So anyway, I, uh, I lost mine that I had. Uh, I had a Starrett and uh, this one is a Lufkin, which Lufkin is just an excellent brand too. And uh, so I'm gonna clean this one up a little bit and uh, um, put my name on it I think this time uh, I don't know if I had my name in the other one but uh, anyway ten bucks for that that was from my friend at the uh, the flea market there he's he's got a, he's got quite a few of these actually and uh, I don't know these are uh, I think over a hundred dollars new so uh, anyway anyway that was a good buy okay and then the last thing I got at the flea market 
was uh, some more trays. Uh, and these are these uh, um, fiberglass ones here. These are these, you know, they're really bulletproof ones here. Anyway, I've been using the heck out of these things around the shop. You know, you can put a, you can put a, a project in them, you know, and then take it around the shop and it kind of keeps it together and uh, while you're horsing around with things. So it uh, kind of works out nicely. Anyway, these were a dollar a piece. Guy had a big stack of them and I already have quite a few, but uh, I figured, hey, a dollar a piece, I'll get a couple more, so. Okay, uh, so the last thing we're gonna look at here is um, I recently got this, uh, this KBC catalog and they're, they're a tool supplier um, like Travers and Enco and uh, uh, MSC and those guys. Um, they recently, or I don't know, had their 50th anniversary or something like that, I don't know. Anyway, so I requested a catalog and I got a couple of catalogs. And you can see I got some flags on here. So we're gonna, we're gonna look at a couple things in here. Um, Anyway, uh, I guess they're they're based out of Canada, and but they have branches in the uh, in the U.S. So uh, um, yes, they'll ship to Canada. So uh, uh, that's <laughs> that's where they're from. So uh, so let's let's look at a couple of interesting things that I uh, just going through the catalog that I thought you guys would get a kick out of. So the first one's pretty cool here. You know, a bunch of people have asked about these spring tool holders, right? Well, apparently somebody sells them. And uh, I, I've been telling people, hey, listen, I don't know anybody that sells these things anymore, And uh, but here it is. Uh, this is KBC, and uh, there's the Armstrong uh, spring cutoff tool holders. Now, they don't give them away, and it doesn't surprise me, they don't probably, they don't make very many of them probably, Armstrong, um, but there it is. And it, it goes into the, the lantern uh, type uh, tool post, um, so if you guys are wanting to try one of those out, uh, you can get one. So uh, I don't know if you can read the part, uh, the part number there. And, but uh, anyway, go to KBC Tools and look up spring, spring cutoff tool holder and that should pop up. Okay, so that's the, uh, the first one that I thought was kind of cool. And then uh, the next one here is, so here's a, uh, <laughs> We were talking about uh, mini horizontal vertical rotary tables. I showed my little four inch one uh, uh, on camera here. So here's, here's one and um, they have a smaller one, a three inch one, and they also have a four inch one and uh, it's got a Morse taper center hole. Well, here's what caught my attention is this price here. Okay, so the four inch, which is like mine is $131. And uh, now I probably spent that in the, on the gears and the, uh, and the anodizing and all that stuff on mine. Um, so if you want one and maybe you don't feel like building one, uh, you can buy one, a nice small one like that. Now, it's a really good project. It teaches you a lot of stuff about building mechanisms. You know, you have to get all these things lined up nicely and uh, for it to operate smoothly. And so it's a, it's a world of lessons if you build one yourself. But if you don't want to build one or you, it might be too difficult of a project, you can, uh, 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 or you don't have the equipment to build one, but you still want one, uh, you can buy one. And uh, you can buy a three inch for 108 or a four inch for 131. So anyway, that was, uh, that was that. Okay, so the next one here, um, scooting along here, my flags here. Okay, so um, here's, a, you know, we've also been talking about sign bars pretty regularly here. And um, so here's an economy sign bar, all right, and uh, they're guaranteeing the uh, top row, uh, Top to bottom, distance between center rolls, uh, plus or minus four tenths. Um, okay, yeah, that's not bad. Um, anyway, but here, let's see, we're at five inch, $25. Okay, so there really shouldn't be a roadblock to anybody getting a sign bar. Okay, now, you, you know, you can spend a lot more, certainly. Um, yeah, I don't see any more on this page here. Oh, here's one, $38. So, you, you know, you can, uh, uh, it's a little bit better there. So, uh, um, you know, if you want to play around with the sign bar and you don't want to make one or putz around with one, you can buy one, 25 bucks, and you're kind of off and running. And you can machine your own little blocks to go under here. You can use pins. You can use adjustable parallels. So there's, there's lots of stuff you can do to set the heights on that. So 
don't uh, let cost be a roadblock uh, to, to trying uh, that really uh, that really accurate uh, way of setting angles. Okay, so now let's see what is. Uh, oh, okay, here we go. Yeah, um, so this caught my uh, attention too because we were just recently talking about laps, and um, and here they are again. And this is Acra laps, and these guys you can actually find on the web. Um, and they got a couple styles here. They got through ones, and then they have blind hole, uh, blind. And this somebody was asking about a little detail on how these things are are built internally, and they you kind of see it there a little bit. Okay, and there's the expander. Anyway, so they have those, and you can see some of the prices here. They're not particularly expensive. All right, so one and a quarter. I'm re trying to read upside down here. Complete barrel laps, twenty dollars for one and a quarter. All right, so once again, uh, not a uh, not an expensive thing. And then here's some diamond um, um, diamond compound. You know, if you want to lap something hard, and um, they got some more. Uh, here's the clover, the deadly clover. So I don't recommend that. I I, I prefer the time saver stuff on this. So. Okay, so moving on here, um, let's see what this next flag is here. Um, oh, that's that's just me looking at these. Um, I've always wanted a set of these little wee blocks here like this, but I just never, I never needed them enough, I guess, um, to, to go ahead and buy them. So the way these work, they're very, very tiny little V-blocks that fit in a larger V-block. Um, and Brown and Sharp makes some, and uh, some other people make some. Anyway, that's not a bad price. Uh, it says made in the USA, so I'm not sure who makes these, but uh, um, you know that's a lot of work to make all that stuff uh, yourself. But uh, anyways, so that's just like I said, that's just me kind of looking at that. Um, so we just talk about it for a sec, and then the last one here, it's another sign bar here, and I think they show some other ones here, and you can get a fancy one here, uh, one tenth, uh, two hundred bucks. Or you can play around with the economy one here and do pretty good uh, for $25. So that's a pretty big difference. That's an order of magnitude different there uh, in price, which is fairly significant. So uh, anyway, uh, that's, so that's KBC Tools. Um, there's their deal there. And uh, phone numbers, uh, website. Uh, check them out. They have uh, some neat stuff in there.